ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله فصلى الله عليه صلاة وسلاما يلقان بمقام سيد الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين Respected brothers and sisters in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran reminds us about taqwa and he tells us that there is worldly benefits of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being conscious about Allah Allah says in the Quran أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبِ And whoever fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make an exit for him or her from every difficult situation. And Allah will provide for him or her from means, from sources, from doors that you never know existed. وَيَرْزُقُهُ من حيث لا يحتسب ومن يتوكل على الله فهو حسبه and whoever relies and puts their confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is enough for them Allah is sufficient for them brothers and sisters this week I received about three to four phone calls from brothers who lost their jobs and while this happens every week this happens in different places of the world. We in America were a little bit spoiled. Whenever there's a little bit of fluctuation in the economy, we start thinking about rizq, thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thinking about al-ghayb, the unseen. There are other parts of the world, subhanAllah, that they have no idea, they have a business, they have a job that they will never, that, that they don't know that this job will exist the next day or the next week. But the fact of the matter is, at least for us in this community, we are experiencing a moment, and those who work in the auto industry, like myself, know exactly what I'm talking about. There will be some fitness activities, there will be some you know, changes in the industry that will result in many people get laid off, subhanAllah. And I felt it's essential for me first. I feel I need to hear this khutbah, I, I needed to prepare the, for this talk, and to share it with my brothers and sisters. All of us need to be reminded about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the name of Allah, Ar-Razzaq, the one who provides. That's not only for the working professionals. It's very relevant for the youth who don't know which college they're, go go they're getting through. They, they, they submitted their applications, they're waiting for the answers. They submitted their application for the scholarship. I, know, I remember the sister who thought that the whole world will end if she makes it to a certain school, certain program, and then when she did not receive that uh, result. She was very anxious. She, she, she thought that her life has ended. And she's only 17. It's like, <laughs> subhanAllah. Brothers, can you come to the front a little bit? Jazakumullah khair. For the sisters who get a lot of marriage proposals, and she starts asking, is he the one? He seems okay, but she's afraid from what seems to be, what our cultures forced it to be a one-way commitment, a one-way ticket with no return, which is not true, which is not Islamic. And then, because marriage is a rizq, marriage, marrying the right person is a rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we limit our understanding of rizq to the paycheck. And there's tons of opportunities. Having kids is a rizq. I know a brother who has been married for 10 years, subhanAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for a wisdom that only Allah knows, delayed, that this person should not get a, a, a son or a daughter at this point in time. Having kids is a rizq, but also having righteous kids is a bigger rizq. Ask a family who, subhanAllah, their son or their daughter went through ways in life and made some wrong decisions, and the family still has to pay for these wrong decisions, subhanAllah. Having righteous children is a rizq from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not only a job, it's not only getting a paycheck, it's not only getting a degree. There is tons of ways of rizq that all of us should be reminded about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the name of Allah, Ar-Razzaq. Maybe I should start with 
this beautiful hadith that the Prophet وسلم, tells us that our rizq is a done deal. It's written, it's set in stone before we are even born. Prophet وسلم, tells us, إن أحدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوما نطفة. One of you, when you are in the belly of your mother, the creation is put together, and there's a, a, a point where you're in a nutfa stage, you're just a sperm. Then it's a clinging cloth. It's kind of a piece of flesh that's hanging on the womb of the mother. Then this piece of flesh is evolving a little bit. It will look like a chewed piece of meat, very detailed description from the Prophet ﷺ and also in the Quran. So then he said, Arba'ina yawman for one stage, then another 40 days, then another 40 days, that's a total of 120 days or four months. And then the Prophet ﷺ tells us that an angel will be sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَيَنْفُخْ فِيهِ الرُّوحِ Before this body, this human being, was nothing but a piece of flesh. There was no, it's just a, just a biological component. But then the ruh, that secret from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we don't really understand and we will never understand. This ruh will be blown, will be put into that baby. That angel will write four things that were already written but they will be set in stone. Rizqihi. يكتب بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقي أم سعيد. That angel will write down every single sustenance, every رزق, every penny that this person will will earn in this world. And how much this person will spend on earth وأجله وعمله and their deeds and their final destination in the hereafter. Very common question that gets asked from this hadith. So it's, it's set in stone, so I cannot do anything? Yes, of course you can do anything, because when you wake up in the morning, you feel you have some choice, right? And you do have a choice. The only difference is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the choice that you will make, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the idea is the rizq is his responsibility, not your responsibility. You should understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only for you, also for your kids. For those of you who have kids at home, and I have four kids, and sometimes I look at them and, hey, what's going to happen to them in the, in the future? What about their college? What about blah, blah, blah? Allah has written their rizq before they were born. And once we understand this, once we live by this, yes, we do work and work hard. We try to plan our business endeavors. We try to work hard for our exams. We try to be creative at our job so that we get promoted. But we sleep at night like babies without the over-concern, without the worry, without this overthought, And I'll be honest, we are weak. I am weak myself. Because sometimes we, okay, what's gonna happen? There are people who lost their jobs this week are high performers, very smart people, who have served their companies for decades, very dedicated individuals. But SubhanAllah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has written that this person, he or she will lose their source of rizq from that source, but they will get it from another source. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. Yesterday, a brother called me from a company. Brother Muhammad, I lost my job. Alhamdulillah, qaddallah. He was saying alhamdulillah. He was mentioning dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then I finished and I was on my way to pray dhuhr in my building. And I ran to a brother. The brother, he knows me. I didn't know him. He knows me from the masjid. Salaamu alaikum, alaikum salam. I have three openings. Do you have people? Wallahi. In the same 10 minutes, I get a phone call from somebody telling me he got laid off. Within 10 minutes, the guy had an, ajab, had an email about the opportunity. This morning before I came to Jum'ah, I got an email saying, MashaAllah, I love his credentials. Let me forward him to another manager. Because it's not me or you who give rizq. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once we understand this, once we put our reliance on Allah, not on people, not on the husband, not on our parents, but on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our life will change and change a lot. Some narration about Nabiullah Sulaiman And when I say some narration, it's in the Athar. It's most likely not authentic, but the scholars give it for the Ibra, for, 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 for the meaning. And Sulaiman used to have this ability to talk to the ants and the insects and animals and different people. So he saw an, an ant 
uh, you know, going and getting some, uh, some, uh, you know, some food. And he told her, how many, uh, how many grains do you need to eat? She said, two per year. Small ant on a diet, only eats two, and two, two, two grains per year. So he told her, I'm going to put you in a box and give you two pieces of grain every year. And then this, this, and he disappeared and she was in that box. And he came after a year and he saw her that she ate only one piece and she left the other piece. She was storing, she was saving that other piece. I said, hey, what's wrong? You told me that you eat two and you only ate one. Are you lying to me? She said, no. But before, I used to depend and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know that I can eat two grains every year. But now I have to rely on Sulaiman. And Sulaiman is a good guy, but he is a creation of Allah. He is maybe not as reliable as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let me eat one grain and save it for the future. Allahu Akbar. So the moral of the story is that subhanallah, Allah never forgets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written your rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has a plan for you that's way beyond that of what you can imagine. I'm talking about rizq and I see working professionals who are business owners or entrepreneurs and who are interpreting this rizq in a dollar amount. But other people in the audience should interpret this in a different way. Your school, your, your, your kids, or your husband or your wife, or your future husband or wife, it's all written for you. So you should understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a very good plan for you. Prophet, sallallahu, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, once we, under, we should understand something about Allah's rizq, it's for everyone. For believers, for disbelievers, for the ants, for the animals, for everyone. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا there isn't a single animal, beast, being, everything that walks on earth or even flies, Allah has guaranteed their rizq. So this applies to kuffar and to mu'mineen, to believers. So once we see that somebody has a lot of rizq, it's not an indication that Allah loves or hates this person. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَّمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا People, Understand that, oh, Allah hates me. That's why I lost my job. Very wrong misconception. Very wrong idea. That, hey, it's happening to me so because Allah is angry at me. No. Yes, you have to do more istighfar. You have to do more dua. You have to get closer to Allah. But not at all. وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَهَانًا كَلَّا Never. It's not, don't look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes you or, or, or hates you based on your rizq, on your worldly sustenance. Because Prophet tells us, لَوْ أَنَّ الدُّنْيَا تُسَاوِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جَنَاحَ بَعُوضًا If the whole world were to, were to be worth in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a wing of a mosquito. مَا سَقَى مِنْهَا كَافِرًا جُرْعَةَ مَا Allah will never give a disbeliever not even a sip of water. So let's not base our worldly. And I know some sisters, sometimes they come to us after the halaqa and they are, I, 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 I would call this spiritual OCD. When people have so much interpretation to what's happening to them. And usually it's based on dunya, not at all. The signs of Allah, if Allah loves you or not, how much spiritual activities you are doing, how many halaqas you're attending. How much sadaqahs you are getting. How many phone calls you are getting for people to ask you to help them. This is the sign of Allah loving you. Because he's sending more people your way. Not worldly, not materialistic ways. So we agreed that it's not about worldly things. Because Allah gives to both kuffar and to believers. A story about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. That Ibrahim was known to be very hospitable. He would cook and go out of his way to slaughter. Even if he had few animals, he would slaughter, prepare some meal, and give it to everyone. Prophet Ibrahim one time saw a man in the desert and invited him for over for, for, for food. And he's preparing to cook the food, so he put some fire together and he started you know, grilling that, that, that meat. And the guy turned out to be a fire worshiper. He started worshiping the fire in front of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the forefather of Tawheed, the one who strived his life, dedicated his life for Tawheed, for worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That person, 
started worshiping the fire. So Ibrahim, hey, hey not, not under my watch. Get out of here. You never, I'm not going to feed you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ya Ibrahim, one hour you could not be patient on him because he was worshiping the fire. And I've been, worship, I've been realizing that he worships other than me for 60 years and I've been always providing for him every single day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides and provides and provides. Brothers and sisters, when talking about Allah, al-Rizq, al-Razzaq, we should understand that this does not negate you taking the means. That's a common misunderstanding. Prophet ﷺ gave us a very clear image, a very clear picture that tells us what's the difference, what's the fine line between tawakkul ala Allah wa tawakkul ala Allah, which is somebody sitting at the masjid, just doing nothing, making dua to Allah, like my friend who used to always uh, go before the exam. So he has an exam the next morning. So before the exam, he would go to the masjid, make sure that every elderly person in the masjid makes dua for him before his exam. He doesn't study, he doesn't do anything, just makes dua for him. That guy took, it took him eight years to finish his bachelor, mashallah, just because his understanding of tawakkul and tawakkul is wrong. So the idea, brothers and sisters, is that you should put the effort while having confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawakkul ala Allah is a ibadah for the qalb, for the heart. And taking the means and working hard is a ibadah for the limbs, for your mind, for your hands, for your feet. So you should not, you should, you should keep a tawakkul in your heart. You should keep the asbab, the means in your limbs. And don't make the tawakkul go to your limbs because you will become a lazy person. Like that guy, Umar ibn Khattab saw him in the masjid. And Umar ibn Khattab, you don't mess with Umar is around. Umar was, subhanallah, was that guy who corrected a lot of the misconceptions in the minds and hearts of the Muslim ummah. He saw that person in the masjid all day reading Quran. What are you doing? Hey, I'm reading Quran. What are you doing reading Quran? He said, إِنَّمَا أُنزِلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ لِتَعْمَلَ بِهِ أَفَاتَّخَذْتَ قِرَاءَتَهُ عَمَلًا Allahu Akbar on his understanding. This Quran was revealed so that you learn from it and then you apply it in your life. You apply it while you're doing your job. You don't take reading the Quran as your main job. You, 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 you miss the point. Subhanallah. You see, you see how spirituality can be misunderstood? So, Prophet ﷺ painted that picture for us. If you rely, if you, if you truly trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you should trust Him, the right way, the sunnah way, كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطير. He will provide for you as He provides for the birds. Every time you see a bird, now I know it's a cold weather in Michigan, but every time you reflect on the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the birds, remember this hadith. لَرَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْرِ تَغْدُوا خِمَاصًا وَتَجِيءُ بِطَانًا The birds fly in the morning. Their stomachs are empty. They have nothing. They have no fridges. They have, they have no, nothing to feed their babies in the, you know, in the night. But the, the key word here is تَغْدُوا They go and fly. They go and take the means. They go and search. تَغْدُوا خِمَاصًا وَتَجِيءُ وَتَرُوحُوا بِطَانًا in the, in the afternoon, in the night, they are full and they have enough food for their kids. But the key word is that they work hard. Brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remind us of Ismullah al-Razzaq. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our brothers and sisters who are suffering. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the brothers and sisters around the world, especially in Yemen, who are facing a lot of poverty, a lot of hunger, a lot of starvation. And we, unfortunately, after we fill our stomachs with food, and drinks, we forget about them. We forget about their struggles. We forget about their babies. We forget about their kids. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us so that we help others. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Brothers and sisters, the action item, the, the takeaway from the khutbah is very simple. Get to know Allah again and more through the name of Allah, Ar-Razzaq. Remind yourself and remind others how Allah is Ar-Razzaq, the correct way, the right way of understanding how Allah is the provider. Understand 
the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that not a single soul will die except that that person will get everything that it was written for them, it was maktub for them. True story, a friend of ours, he was telling us about his grandfather. His grandfather was going very sick and people realized that this person, it might be his last day or last week. And subhanAllah, so he was sleeping in the night and woke up in the morning, drank some water, and then after that he slept and he did not wake up at all. And while this is common to see between for the old people and people who are terminally ill and everything, the shahid here is that subhanAllah, that person, when he slept in the night, he did not drink that water yet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, has written, has prescribed exactly how much droplets of water this person will get in this world, subhanAllah. So he needed to wake up in the morning, drink his last sip of water, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his soul and he died. This story and many others that you will ask people around you, who, people, brothers and sisters who have more wisdom, and who will tell us more stories about Ismullah al-Razzaq, reminds us of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he tells us, Inna ruh al-Qudus, nafatha fi raw'i. Angel Jibreel came and gave me an inspiration, sent me this message. It's not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from Allah, but not a Quran. Anna nafsan lan tamut hatta tastakmila rizqaha wa ajalaha. Not a single soul will die. Nobody will die. Nobody will leave this earth until they get everything that was prescribed for them. The idea is, yes, you work hard, but take it easy. Your heart is connected to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has asked us to work hard on our deeds. As for the rizq, Allah has actually provided and guaranteed it for us. Al-Hasan al-Basri was asked, what made you have this highest level of spirituality? What made the dunya be insignificant in your heart? He said, عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ رِزْقِي لَنْ يَأْخُذَهُ أَحَدٌ غَيْرِي فَاطْمَأَنَّ قَلْبِي I realized that my rizq, nobody else will take it from me. So my heart is at ease. You see some, let me pick on lawyers or doctors or even engineers, sometimes a young person joins your company and they are interning under you. And then subhanAllah, the shaitan will start, as shaitan yaidukum al faqra as shaitan will always start reminding you about poverty. Say, oh, this person is bright. He might take my spot, my, or she might take my spot 20 years from now. So let me put them down. Let me, try, let me start fighting them. And you should understand that, uh, you should understand that the rizq that's for you, wallahi, this person will not get it. What's for you is for you, subhanAllah. And you know what's painful? When I see Muslims doing this, who should believe in Allah al-Razzaq. And you know what's more painful? When I learn that lesson from a non-Muslim. When I see a non-Muslim technical specialist or professional or manager who's helping others grow because he knows that they won't take from his share. So who should remind us about the name of Allah al-Razzaq? I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give all of us in this week and in the coming weeks and months and in all of our lives the yaqeen, the certainty on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our brothers and sisters who are suffering. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us be mindful of his rizq and to help us be thankful for his rizq. Allah maghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma inna na'udu bika an nadilla au nudal au nazilla au nuzal au nadlima au nudlam au najahla au yajahla alayna. Allahumma inna na'udu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan wa na'udu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasal wa na'udu bika min al-jubni wal-bukhul ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة 